I have the Alexander Beetle, my pet. He's a Mega Dromus Antarcticus. And today we're taking him to Lincoln to see it. Into wait, I said it him. It's spoke. We're gonna hope that the entomologist will be able to tell us whether it's a him or a her. It's not very likely that he will be able to because, well, yeah, in the there was nothing on it in, in the internet, but we can still hope. So we feed him slugs and swivel centipedes. This obviously isn't his enclosure. He lives in that over there, but we just we just we're just we're just putting him in here so you can see him. He's nocturnal, so this is a like serious stay up light like <laughs> for him. So well yeah. Um He's going to be staying up even later because we're going to an entomologist. Now, off we go to see an entomologist. We're here at the Lincoln Coleoptera Collection to have a look. This is um, the curator of this insect collection in here. So the curator in that job had to look after the collection, make sure all the specimens are in good order and bring new specimens into the collection. Yeah. It's one of the biggest collections in New Zealand mm -hmm. but it's way smaller than the very biggest one. That's a, a place called Land Care Research in Auckland and they've got millions of specimens there. Maybe five million or something like that. Huh. It's a lot. And we think we've got about a quarter of a million here. So 250,000. Good news for you is that quite a lot of this collection is beetles. So these are these names. A name ends. I wouldn't usually ask um, kids your age this sort of or tell, talk to kids your age about this sort of stuff. But you're pretty keen, obviously. So I'm sure you can handle this. If you see a name that ends in that bit, idae, mm -hmm. like omatidae or carabidae. That means it's a family. That is the name for ground beetles like Alex. Yeah. But it's a big family and in New Zealand there's probably, oh I don't know, there might be two or three hundred different sorts of ground beetles. Have you ever seen these things? I don't know what they are. Tiger beetles. Yes, well done. Where did you find them? Well, I can tell you that. I can tell you that quite exactly because we've got all these labels on these specimens so if you say where did I find it well I didn't necessarily find them if you can see one that has J Maris on the label <laughs> and I will have found it there's one there J W M Maris New Zealand S D that's in a place called the Mole Brussels at the top of the South Island they have, they have little tiny holes in the ground mm -hmm. where the larvae the glub, grubs um, mm -hmm. they live do you, do you know what they do? I tell you what, they're pretty nifty things. So they look like a kind of a caterpillar, mm -hmm. but they've got a hard head, hard flat head, and great big jaws. And they make a hole in the ground, and they just lie in this hole with this mm -hmm. flat head that sits at the top of the hole, so it sort of seals the hole off. And they lie there with their jaws, great big meaty jaws, oh. open. Oh yeah, I remember I watched the documentary about this don't they when insect comes go and grab it they do so if you happen to be an ant maybe <laughs> you're walking along a clay track or something and i am a tiger beetle larva <laughs> lying secretly in the hole in the ground you come along tootling, tootling along mind your own minding your own business and i go whammo <laughs> and grab you and pull you down into the into the hole <laughs> and gobble you up I saw a video of a, a tiger beetle mm -hmm. taking off and it looked like it was there and then gone. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, there, not there. Yep, they run really fast and they can fly pretty quickly too. They usually mm -hmm. just do quick, short flights, a metre or two metres or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
you're going to become an expert on tiger beetles in New Zealand, say. So that means you have to be able to tell these different sorts apart. More different ones here. Can you see those okay? They look all the same to me. I know, and that's the problem. What's that Okay, yeah, that is a good question. You've seen how similar these things are, mm -hmm. and so it can be hard to tell them apart. One of the ways we can tell for certain, usually, as long as we know enough about these insects, is by dissecting them. So you cut them open, and okay. most likely these are boys, males, where you see those little jars, little vials, and we dissect that, cut out their genitalia. Hmm. <laughs> They're a bit like, a bit, bit different, I should say, from human genitalia. So the the hard, sticky sort of bits, and they look different between different species. Mm -hmm. So, so just be thankful that you're not <laughs> not a beetle. You don't have your genitalia <laughs> cut out to be identified. And this is Sissendalini. So I know these are that's the name for tiger beetles, and these are ones from different countries. So we'll see what they look like. And they look like quite different all together. So there's very cool green ones here. They're huge compared to the other guys. They are. Woo. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're doozies, aren't they? That one looks like someone's gone and um and painted the yellow stripes splodge. on the edge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're quite cool, though, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. Those one look like those ones look like black praying mantises. They're strange, aren't they? These ones here. Around a bit. So these are different sorts of beetles. These are New Zealand ones that live up in the top of the North Island mm -hmm. where there are cowrie forests. You know about the cowrie trees, the great big trees up in the mm -hmm. top of the North Island. And in those forests, there are also lots of snails that live in there because nice wet, wet places uh, that snails like. Are you going to say that they eat snails? I am going to say that they eat snails. Well, I don't need to say that because you've already said it. <laughs> Do you see that they've got sort of long, skinny heads? Mm -hmm. So they're perfectly designed so they can stick their heads up the shell of the snail mm -hmm. and gobble them up. I'm going to say, um, do you find the insects dead? Or sometimes, sometimes you do, but mostly, almost, almost always, they're alive. Mm -hmm. So you have to kill them. Which some people don't like. The idea that you have to kill them to stick them in your collection. Mm -hmm. But there's no way we can really study study them for being able to identify them and stick names on them without having them dead. Because like old Alex through there, if you're trying to, trying to study it, it would start scampering away and, and you couldn't really do things very easily. Does that look like Alex? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Ah, now. Some of these, see so even like that one there. That one there looks nice like. Yeah. Uh, see the see the back end of that one there? Mm -hmm. That one there. Mm -hmm. Those are male ones and they've had their genitalia pulled out. So you can see they look quite weird. And actually it's a good example of this because there are some, I think it might be these, we haven't really sorted them out. These that people now think are a different species mm -hmm. to this species. And they kind of look a bit bigger, but uh, we're the same species, and I'm a bit bigger than you. Mm -hmm. So you can't be sure just because one's bigger than the other whether, whether it's yeah. different or not. It's quite tricky. Mm -hmm. And people like Rob, he can do clever stuff in the lab looking at uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about DNA? I think it's right. So that was one sort of Megadromus, just quickly, more Megadromus. They look di very different, they do. those ones. Yeah, you're not going to mix those up. Those ones, maybe, well, would you be sure that's not an Alex? They're tiny. <laughs>
Yes, exactly. See how the wing cases have opened up? The elytra have opened up. And you can see underneath. Hi. They're flying um, wings. I have a male turtle, and well, it's uh, small. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah, but um, when I was showing it to someone, I dropped it and the head fell off. Ooh! Yes, they're called mm -hmm. long horn beetles, because the beetle mm -hmm. is long, very long antennae. Or Cerambicidae is the family. Cerambicidae. Mm -hmm. And. See that one there? Mm -hmm. Is that the most beautiful beetle in this drawer? Or perhaps this whole collection, would you say? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> a little more convincing, maybe? <laughs> this one is called Coptoma marisai. And my name is John Maris. <laughs> so that got named after me. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. So, you never know, you might get a beetle named after you one of these days. <laughs> Before we get to that, you know about click, click beetles? Yeah, I, I love turning them over and they go click! <laughs> these ones don't really do that very well. These are, these are quite big click beetles, <coughs> only found in New Zealand. Um, they're huge. Quite big. Those ones are only known from the Chatham Islands. Mm -hmm. Those are only known from the Marlborough Sounds, right up mm -hmm. on the top of the South Island. And this one is only known from a place called the Three Kings Islands. Oh yeah, I've, I've got one of those in the um, box. Oh, have you? Yeah. Ah, a click beetle in that book or a different And one there? of those click what beetles difference? called the Three Kings click beetle. Ah. Three Kings Island click beetle or something. Well, it might not have a... A name on it, a, a scientific name on it, because that, that that was a species that I did some research on, and so with another person we named it Amicus Manawatafi Maris, that's me again, and Johnson, that's another person who's a who's a expert on click beetles. Dung beetles. Not very good on dung beetles. We don't we don't have many dung beetles in New Zealand because we don't have much dung. Some of these are out on loan at the moment. These are some of our dung beetles. Um, no, these aren't our native ones actually. That's one of our native dung beetles there. They're tiny. Uh, kind of. Um, these ones are all introduced into New Zealand mm -hmm. because we've got all these introduced animals mm -hmm. that um, produce dung, and where they live, they're used to having things like dung beetles bury it and tidy up the mess. Um, but in New Zealand, we don't have that, so we've introduced these ones to do that job. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we might have a bit of a dungy sort of a country. We think that these are dung beetles that don't feed on dung, mm. so they could be called not dung beetles. <laughs> And I think that instead of feeding on dung, they just feed on sort of rotting, rotting plant stuff. Mm -hmm. A bit like compost in the compost heap. What I mean. That's a proper <laughs> dung beetle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's not bad, is it? The, the black pins mm. in these drawers should also tell you that they're from overseas. Yeah, there's a nice one there. Uh, yeah. Now that's kind of cute. Uh, <laughs> dung beetle, that's not a bad one, is it? Okay, well, I'll show you our biggest New Zealand stag beetles. We've got about, I don't know, 20 or so stag beetles in New Zealand. Uh, I'll include these guys here. Wow. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Um, so, stag beetles are called that because they have these great big jaws that would sometimes look like antlers mm -hmm. on deer stags. Fight, fighting each other, are scrapping. Are they fighting for females or are they just fighting for no reason at all? No, they're fighting for females, yeah. Isn't that yeah. a weird thing? Why would you fight for females? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, they try and they try and battle each other mm -hmm. so that so they can get a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look at this. Who's that? Giraffe oh, weevil. Yes. So weevils are the or the the true weevils, these aren't actually true weavels, are the, uh, the biggest family of insects, the biggest family of any sorts of animals in the world. That means it's the most different sorts of them. So, 
What do you know about these? That one's female. Is that one female? That one female. That one female, and those not male. Yes, you are right. So all males, male, right. male, male, female, female, female. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, this one's the antenna there at the top of the horn, the other uh, horn, whatever you call it, the nose. Rostrum, yeah. your and, nose is fine. Yep. Yeah, and and the female are at the back. Mm -hmm. And also, you see the back of the wing mm -hmm. cases, and the males have got that yeah. kind of cool flared look. 1970s mm -hmm. sort of vibe, mm -hmm. and then see the female there, she just mm -hmm. sort of tapers down to a point like that. Mm -hmm. And these guys are a bit like the stag beetles mm. is that the males fight for the females? Fight for the females. Mm. These guys sort of do well, more like a sword fight, I suppose, and go and then they flick. The, the winner flicks them off the, the branch <laughs> and they fall down to the ground, that sort of thing. Uh, here's some kind yeah, of cool, cool. weevils. Yeah, those colours are not natural colours. Those are, those are painted on by somebody who was studying them. And these are some weevils that... These ones all live on the Chatham Islands. Mm -hmm. And these ones live down on Stewart Island and nearby. And these ones live down near... Well, in Canterbury mostly. These ones, mm -hmm. we thought were extinct. We thought they were like the dinosaurs. But they'd all died out. Nobody was ever going to see them alive again. And then there was somebody studying some special plants down near Lake Tekapo. And she found one of these weevils. In fact, that one there. She thought, oh, what's this? I've, I've never seen that one before. She sent it off to a weevil expert, and he said, Aha! That is Hadramphus tuberculatus, the Canterbury knobbled weevil, because it's got bumps on its back. Mm -hmm. And woohoo, we thought this thing was dead and gone, never to be seen again. But um, we now know that they are alive, except not that one. Mm -hmm. mm. But well, that's, that's part of the thing, you see, it's not very nice having killed that weevil. But because that weevil was killed, it was able to be identified and we could find out what it was and that meant people realised that that species was still alive and people have gone back to where it was found and are now working to protect that area so that more of those weevils can live. So mm. to conserve them. So sometimes sacrificing, killing one, is good for the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you've got to be mean to be good. Mm -hmm. not <laughs> anyway, but the true weevils have what these sort of elbowed antennae. See how they've got a bit of a kink in them? Mm, okay. um, which the giraffe weevils don't. They have more or less straight antennae. Mm -hmm. The smallest insects in our collection. I can't see them. What? <laughs> Wait. Are they on the ends there? You are right. Yes, they are. What are they? Can you tell what they are? Nope. No? I can't. I can, I can only see a teeny weeny weeny dot. You can't see their wings? No. You can't see their antennae? No. <laughs> what? You want these? <laughs> no. They're very, very small. They are... Tiny, tiny, tiny little wasps. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And um. they live inside insect eggs. Wetter cabinet. Yeah. You've seen wetters? I don't know. No? Nope. Well, you have to get out there and see if you can find something. We've got different sorts of wetters. We have cave wetters. And they live in. Okay. Nice work. <laughs> wow. Like that. But they don't actually just live in caves, but they do like to live in sort of holes and trees and mm -hmm. things like that. Then we have tusk wetters, quite big. Well, these are called tusk wetters because the males, like this one, can you see? You have to look right over, perhaps. See the big tusks? Oh, yeah. A bit like an elephant tusk. Yeah. 
Same story as before. Boys yeah. fighting the boys, get the girlfriends. Three weta, uh, probably the best known sorts of weta in New Zealand. Tree wetters live in trees. Mostly. Yep. Mm. These ones live in trees, and some of the males, particularly the big males, they get to have great big heads and great big jaws. Mm -hmm. Don't stick your finger around there, okay? Okay. Because you'll have a smaller finger after that. Some um, are uh, medium big. Those are sort of medium sized. Those are. Call those big? Yeah. I'd call those big. Um, that. These ones are. That's that, that species is the biggest and that's the second biggest. Those are eggs. Giant litter eggs. Which are way bigger than some of the insects. Adult insects we've got. So they're kind of flat. And. That's well, that's our only New Zealand one. If you can get down low, you can sort of see this kind of flat and squished looking. Oh. Hey, um, I think I might have seen something that looks kind of like one of those. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of. Um, it was under some gl glass and I thought it had been squished. Oh, <laughs> really? Well... It was about that flat. I can be almost certain that you won't have seen one of these yeah. in New Zealand okay. because they're only found in the Three Kings Islands, so way off yeah. the top of the North Island. Hmm. Those are cuckoos. Not too many people will have seen that species. Well, I'll, be be I'll be bound. You won't have any friends at school who have ever seen one of those. <laughs> there's only been about, there's only ever been about 12 of them collected. So, we're in rare company. Bupris today. Jewel beetles. Mm. Um, it's not underwhelming. No, it's, not too bad. it's not too bad at all. <laughs> I, I, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. But if that one there is amazing. Not bad, is it? But if you want to see New Zealand jewel beetles, um. you won't be too impressed. There's that species <laughs> and there's that species. Those are actually kind of cool. If you look at them closely, they've got quite sort of metallic y colours, but yeah. nice spots on them. Quite cool enough These are not New Zealand ones, these are a mixture from overseas. Wow, wee! Yeah, so in fact, there's, these are rhinoceros beetles here, these ones here. That one's huge. It is big, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a whopper. It is a bit of a whopper. Mm. That's a five horned rhinoceros. You, uh, I don't know what I don't well, it know. does have five horns. <laughs> that seems like a good bet then, doesn't it? I don't know what species it is. Not bad. Shall I show you a bigger mm -hmm. insect? Oh. Okay. Okay. Stick insect. Yes. It's huge. <laughs> it is big, isn't it? That's from Fiji. A bit bigger than the uh, ninety-four. Mm. It was really cool. We saw loads of insects, and um, fortunately, he couldn't tell us whether Alex was girl or boy. So, I'm hoping to go there again. Um, 